after the birth. You know, a lot of times during a difficult time, you would think that, well, things are idle. There's not a lot happening. But did you know that God works in difficult times? Did you know that God is ever present in the dark times of our life? Every one of us go through struggles. Every one of us here in this room, we go through things that it's hard for us to understand sometimes. Maybe you've been through a challenge this week. Maybe something has come your way and you're, you're wondering, how does this make sense? Why is this going on in my life? I thought I got over this. I thought that I was uh, ahead of this and here I'm dealing with the same thing again. God works when the enemy attacks the most. You know, in the scriptures, uh, um, we're, actually we're in Matthew chapter 2. For the next three weeks, this weekend, we start off Saturday. Uh, we had a service Saturday at 7 p.m. online. But this weekend, next weekend, and the next weekend, we're going to kind of be looking at the Christmas story. We're kind of going to be looking at... Uh, how this all came about and how it affects your life today. I was reading in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Put it up there, John David. Let's read three verses this morning. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. We're talking about after the birth. Here's what happened. There was 400 years of silence. There's 400 years where the scriptures didn't record a lot of action going on. Sure, God was working. God was present in people's lives, but the, the, the scriptures don't record a lot of God talking. Then, one day, Mary got news that she was pregnant, that, that she was with child. An angel came and told her that uh, you're carrying the Son of God. He's going to redeem mankind. Now, in the Jewish tradition, they were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for Emmanuel. They were looking for God to come to the earth and deliver them. For much of their existence, they were under captivity, slaves. They were ruled by other stronger nations. They were taken advantage of. Egypt ruled them for a while. Babylon ruled them. Other foreign powers came in and, and, and uprooted them from their homeland, took them and, and made them uh, uh, smiths and carpenters and all sorts of different things to help in a building projects. Well, they were tired of it and, and they wanted their own life. They wanted to be free and they would cry out to God. The scriptures teach us that God heard their prayer. The scriptures teach us that, that God uh, understood and heard their prayer and, and didn't, always knew that he was going to come and help them. So when Jesus came, born uh, uh, in a manger, they had a hard time with this. For some would say, is this the king we were looking for? Is this the Messiah? Is this our deliverer? Some discounted it early on. Some said, no, this can't be. We were looking for someone to come and deliver us in a forceful way. But now Jesus coming as a baby in a manger, helpless, without form, and, and they had a hard time understanding it. Listen, maybe in your life, you're having a hard time understanding what God is doing today. You went through some periods of, of uh, quiet years. That was good in some respects, but you're here today and you're going through a difficult time. It's a tough season in your life. Well, that's what it says here. After Jesus was born, during the time of King Herod. 
To be living in a time of King Herod was a difficult time. To be living in this time when Herod was reigning, that was a tough time to be living in. Government was not good. Government was lording over too much taxes, too many work projects. Herod kind of had a complex that he wanted to build things. He wanted to put his mark on it, and he used people wrongly. The people were tired of it. Now another Roman group was coming in, and this king was a bad king. So to be in a time of King Herod was not a good time to be alive. We think we have it rough today. It was tough. Well, but the neat thing was, God does not allow the world to dictate his plans in your life. It was a difficult time. But God works. Here's what I want to say to you. What has been birthed in your life that you don't know about right now? What is God doing in your life that you think that there's no way anything good can come out of the season I'm in? You see, I'm under attack. You see, I'm being lord over. I'm not able to make all the decisions I want. It's a pretty tough time. It's a season. It's my Herod experience. Oh, I don't, I'm not crying on have as rough as they had it, but I'm going through a dry spell. And I'm here today wondering, is God working in my life? What's God saying to me today? We know, for, as we look at the scriptures here, that God speaks, that God works through difficult times in our life. Here's what I wanted to say as we start off this morning. What possibly has God birthed in your life? What is God doing in your life right now where you think that nothing could be done? You see, it says here that after Jesus was born, during the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born, did you know that many didn't really understand that uh, the birth of the Messiah? Oh, there was a star in, in the sky. But many didn't understand really what was going on. Did you know that maybe you don't understand what God is doing in your life right now? But maybe it's something that you prayed about a long time ago. It's something that you cried about, you hoped for. And you're here today despondent. You're here today wondering. You're here today thinking that your life is falling apart. Where God is saying to you this morning, no. I know what I'm doing in your life, and I'm getting you to where I promised you. You see, the Messiah was a promise. It was something in the Old Ten Testament that they were looking forward to. God's promise for you will never take a back seat to the enemy. As a matter of fact, every attack on your life cannot stack up against what God is doing in your life. You, you see what happened here? It was, it was a difficult time. There was 400 years of, of not a lot pinned from Malachi to Matthew, the last Old Testament uh, book in uh, Malachi. And then to Matthew, there wasn't a lot going on. Then all of a sudden, there was a birth. But it was through a difficult time. God is able to work in your life when you've been given the pink slip, when something you've gotten some kind of bad news. As a matter of fact, may I say this? God usually don't work through good times. Now, and I'm not, not, no, don't take that the wrong way. What I'm saying is God is 11th hour God. God is a deliverer. God is one that helps his people in crisis. So here's what I want to say. The Bible teaches us where there, is, where there is evil, there's more grace. So the Bible teaches us when there is hardship, there's more grace, and God shows up all the more. So that's really what I'm saying in my first point as we look at after the birth. You know, there's three things that I see in this story. There, it was a difficult time. It was, a, it was also a, a time of destiny. And the third point, it was a disturbing time. 
So what do I mean first? It was a difficult time. It was during the time of Herod. You're looking at your life and you say, it's a difficult time. I'm out of work. I'm not making as much as I used to. This is a difficult time. It's uh, in a pandemic. It's in, it's in a time that I'm not doing the best. Here's what I want to say. That God works in difficult times. And matter of fact, listen, when you humble yourself, that's when God works all the more. When you've been humble, when something has been taken from you, when you failed, that's when God draws all the more close to you. And matter of fact, the Bible teaches us that God rejects the proud and gives grace to the humble. So here's what I want to say to you. As we come in this Christmas season, as we come and now we lead up to it, can we have a heart of humility as we lay it before the Lord? You want to see God work in your life? Come to him. Bear yourself before him and say, God, I am nobody. I don't have a whole lot to offer. As a matter of fact, I make mistakes often. I, I don't live up to, to, to the, the standard that I should. But I'm your child. I, I'm, I, I'm in Christ. I'm yours, Lord. Let me tell you, God by no ways rejects his children. You are a child of God. So the first thing that I see here, it was a difficult time. It was during the time of Herod. Second, and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose. The second thing, it was a time of destiny. Now, what do I mean by that? They saw the star. They, 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 it was, it was a promise in the midst of what you're going through, God's going to have his perfect way. What, what, what's destiny mean? Listen, get this, my friends. You know what destiny is? It's developing as according to the plan. Did you know that God is developing your life according to his plan right now? God has a plan for your life. So here's what I want to say. It was a difficult time, but it was also a time that God was working. There was a star. You know, God is not going to take a back seat to the enemy, even in the difficult times. And may I say that in the midst of your difficulty, God is working. In the midst of everything you're going through, God is working. Where is the one who has been born King Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship the third point. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. Now listen, when God begins to work in your life, even if you don't know it, the enemy don't like it. Did you know many of the problems that you're taking on today are part of because God is working in your life? You say, well, I don't know. I, I got difficulties. But listen, listen, stay with me. Jesus was born. Herod knew about it. And they became attacked. Did you know that people are going to come against you? You're going to have problems in your job. You're going to have difficulties. And you're going to wonder where this is coming from. You're going to have been attacked by, by uh, someone. Something. You're going to feel some pressure some force. Did you know that maybe that's the beginning of what God is doing in your life? Here's what I want to say. The earth today is fighting God. Let's be honest. We got turmoil today in the earth. Do you think that is only by coincidence? Or do you think maybe God is doing something in our world today and the earth is responding against it? Listen, King Herod didn't like that Jesus was born. But you cannot stop God. My brother, my sister, you cannot stop what God is doing in your life. Even your sin, even your difficulty, there's nothing can stop the work of God in your life. You can be thankful today that God is working because of his grace. So what we see here, though, is, is that it was disturbing. And the earth, you know, the, earth, the scriptures tell us in these end times, the earth is going to mourn. It's going to groan. 
There's going to be labor pains, the scriptures talk about. Did you know that much of what we're seeing, the societal ills and all these different things, do you think that these things are just naturally happening? Or do you think that there's a bigger picture behind them? Here's what I want to say. That's what I'm saying in your life. Maybe there's a backdrop of what's really going on in your life. Maybe God has birthed something and the enemy knows it. You say, but I, I don't see it. Listen, at first you're not going to see it. And matter of fact, not too many. There was a star in the sky, but not too many really understood what was going on. Some right away rejected it. No, this can't be God. I wanted God to come and destroy the Romans. And you're here today saying, no, this can't be God. I wanted something different. You got to hang in there. Listen, allow it to take form. Allow the, the, the small things, the babe, to grow and develop. Listen, one day you'll see it for what it is. And you'll understand that God knew what he was doing all along. God may be birthing something in your life and you discredit it. You say, no, this can't be. I, 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 don't, I don't understand it. But here's what I want to say. They... Were, it was a disturbing, and many people were pushing back against it. When God begins to work in your life, there's going to be pushback. As a matter of fact, even your own self, you're going to try to say, no, it, your feelings are going to, you're going to many times try to say, no, I, I don't want this. You know what the scriptures say? Stay with me on this. Listen, light has come into this world. But people love darkness because their deeds were evil. Now, what does that say to me here? That says even us at times, we're going to push back. But that's why it's so important to embrace what God is doing. Here's what Herod was doing. Herod was, was disturbed because his days were numbered. Herod was disturbed because now he had competition. Herod... Anyone that stood up to Herod, you know what he did? He killed them. As a matter of fact, what happened to the firstborn? Did you know that everyone, later, we're going to get to that in another week, everyone under two, the babies were killed. You know what I reject? I reject that everything has to go perfect in order for God to work. We're, we're in a society that think that everything always has to go right, and that's, that's, that's just the way it is. Well, when Jesus came to the earth, it was a very difficult time. But God prevailed. Here's what I want to say. In your life, if you have difficulties, it doesn't mean that God is not working. Jesus, the Father, introduced Jesus to the, to the world, and it was one of the darkest times uh, 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 of the world. Here's what I want to say. I reject the notion that everything goes well all the time. I reject the, the notion that you're not going to be under attack from time to time. Here's why. Maybe your attack or your bad news, whatever it may be, maybe that's a sign that God is working in your life. And matter of fact, if you had everything rosy and, and everything was going right all the time, maybe God isn't working and birthing something in your life. Listen. We see here that, that there was the greatest thing that they were looking for. And every two-year-old around was killed. How do you rectify that? How do you rectify so much death and destruction when the greatest gift came that we're celebrating, that we're talking about today? But there was so much destruction there was so much blood. There, 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 there was, it was a hard time. Don't mistake hard times for something that where you think God is not working. In matter of fact, maybe God is doing something more than you even know. Maybe something great. Maybe God is introducing something to you that you don't even know. Here's what I want to say. After the birth, Three things. It was a difficult time. After Jesus was born, after God begins to do something in your life, you're going to, you know what?
That's when you're susceptible to bad news. You might get some report after God begins to give you a promise. You might get a bad report. Maybe your job uh, calls you up. Maybe you, you get in a fight with your, your spouse or your job. Something goes wrong. Listen, you know what many times that is? That's the aftermath. That's the, uh, of what God is doing in your life. That's what happened here. After Jesus was born, there was a difficult time. It was a disturbing time. And we're going to end here. Here's what I want to say. Satan is going to be disturbed many times in the world around you. But that's where, listen, it's the blood of Jesus that covers you and protects you. It's the blood of Jesus. Let me tell you something. There might be rumblings. The, the crust of the earth may be off its, its sphere. There may be difficulties, but God holds the world in the palm of his hand. There are no Herods that can put you down. There are no diseases that can ruin your life. There are no attacks of Satan that can squash you, that can, that can take away what God is doing. The enemy may try, but it's only a try. I shared that, that it was a difficult time. That was a disturbing time. But that is only, that is only uh, a, a something that is there. But it's, that is not the end of the story. The end of the story is you are more than victorious in Christ Jesus. The end of the story is you win for the believer. That's why Jesus came. The people that thought that, no, and they discounted it. He came, but the Father knew what he was doing. The Lamb of God became the Lamb of God. They thought that he should come on, on, a, on a white horse with a sword and start killing the Romans. God came with sandals and starting to share, and people had a hard time. Some of you are having a hard time because you're not getting what God is doing in your life. The word for you today is God knows what he's doing. Hold on. Don't abandon him. Don't abandon your faith. Don't, don't somehow get off course and say, uh, no, keep following God. At the end of the day, after three days, they all went, oh, oh. And the disciples, Peter went fishing for a while. Peter didn't understand it, but then Peter came back and said, now I knew what you said to me as we were walking along. Now I knew. Listen, God knows what he's doing in your life, and the enemy has attacked you, but God has you where, he ha where you are supposed to be today. Don't allow the enemy to discourage you during this Christmas season. Don't allow the enemy to, to take you down. Listen, stand up, be a child of God, and know you are his promised child. Know that you are, that he, he saw you from the beginning of time. Know that when he was on the cross, he saw you, and he knew where you would be. Listen, my friends, you have a destiny that's bright. You got a future that's bright. The enemy lost the war. You won the war. You may have some battles. You may have some battles. You may fight some battles along the way. But the war has been won. And you are more than victorious. Father, we love you. We love you. We honor you. We thank you. Help your people, I pray. Let's all say this together, can we? Dear Jesus, I love you. I thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I accept you. Please forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Father, bless your people. Help them. Give them strength. Give them strength. God, give them strength, we pray. I pray, Lord, this week that you would break something open very powerful in their life. 
I pray that you would show them their star. I pray, God, that there would be a token that you give them where they know that you're working in their life. Give them a sign. God, you gave a sign when you birthed something there. Give your people a sign this week that you're doing something special in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand.